Well, scientists at the University of Saskatchewan have made a new breakthrough in cancer research by using genetic screening. They've been able to identify a new target to suppress breast cancer growth. And these findings are 10 years in the making. Franco Vijay Kumar is one of the leaders of the U of S team behind the research, and he joins me now in studio. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to chat more to you about this. I mean, 10 years in the making, that is a very long time. So first off, how do you feel about making a breakthrough like this? Well, it's a lot of hard work uh, from a number of people. So I'm excited. Finally, the paper is accepted and it's published. Um, but more so, it's just uh, going towards the vision of our cancer research and seeing that it's being accepted in the field as one of the ways to, to look at cancer cells. So what exactly did you identify that could potentially suppress breast cancer growth? So um, let me start by saying the motivation behind the study and, and so you can appreciate it much better. Uh, so... When, you, when it comes to cancer, one of the, the biggest challenges is something called as tumor heterogeneity, which uh, is basically a fancy word for saying not all tumor cells are alike. And so uh, people have been trying to go for combination therapy to look for how to inhibit different kinds of cells by using different drugs. And so this has been one of the approach that has been kind of used in the clinic over several years. And our vision has been like, rather than looking at the differences between these cancer cells, can we look at some of the unifying factors that actually are common for all the cancer cells? And so there is this enzyme called pololike kinase one, and, and the way we actually identified is when this enzyme is actually overproduced in cancer cells, what is the other target that we need to inhibit so that um, we can eliminate the general dependencies of almost all the cancer cells. Um, I actually explain this to my students as like an Indian movie <laughs> where, <laughs> um, you know, there, there's the super bad villain and, and uh, you know, he, he let's say in, in, in Indian, most Indian movies, there are these politicians with the super bad guy and then there are these corrupted police officers or corrupted <laughs> judicial system. Mm -hmm. And and so if you think about the bad enzyme PLK1 as this corrupt police officers, rather than just trying to inhibit that guy, we actually look for the hitman that PLK uses. So can we actually uh, block PLK by inhibiting some of these hitmen like the, the corrupt judicial system and so on? And so that basically disables the cancer cells and make them die. And that's really the crux of the whole research, actually. Amazing. And thank you for explaining it like that, because I feel like oftentimes we have researchers on and we're just kind of sitting here like, what? <laughs> so <laughs> I really appreciate that. What are the potential, I guess, uses or benefits of this research? So um, because we are finding a factor that is unifying to all the cancer cells, there's a very good opportunity for us to extend beyond breast cancer. So right now we actually did all of our experiments and our work modeling everything in uh, triple negative breast cancer models, but we have the ability to now extend this research with additional funding um, for multiple other cancers where this particular enzyme is highly produced. Wow. Has the research been put into practice yet? So that's our really um, a major next step because um, we now have a drug-like molecule um, with the most of the properties that are associated with the drug. It's a chemical inhibitor that we actually worked in collaboration with a German group to bring it for this target. Um, and so now our next step is actually to uh, improve this molecule to work in nanomolar concentrations. And we have uh, great collaborators um, and clinicians on board to work with that. So our next major breakthrough is towards getting additional funding, mm -hmm. <laughs> writing more grants, and, and uh, uh, trying to do that aspect of the research. Yeah. So are we talking about a potential cure for breast cancer? Well, that's 
I, you know, in person, in all reality, I, I think, we're, you know, right now when you say cure, people look at it like, well, you know, we've been battling for a long mm-hmm. time. But I have to say with the advent of genomic medicine, we are much closer to um, the cure for can- cancer in a number of ways. But, you know, it's not just one disease, right? So mm-hmm. there's multiple hundreds of different cancers. So it's a step towards one of those cancer types, right? Like, so uh, there are still a lot of work that needs to be done, but these are baby steps that is actually moving in the right direction. So absolutely, if you ask me, um, I'm, I'm an optimist. Mm-hmm. So I, I think the cure for cancer is really close um, with the research that's happening, not just in our group, like across the globe, right? Mm-hmm. That's very exciting. And, and I like your optimism, and I'm going to hold on to that. How long, though, do you think until this could potentially be used in hospitals and cancer centers, you know, to treat people's cancer? So one of the, the first step that we need to do is to optimize the molecule that we have. Mm-hmm. So make it really more potent. And then the second thing that we wanted to do is try to find, because there is no one single magic bullet for cancer. And that's something that we all realize over the years of work. And so the the important thing is to find a combination therapy that'll actually work even better. And so uh, recently I gave a TEDx uh, University of Saskatchewan talk. Mm -hmm. And so we alluded to another project there. And so there are a number of um, unifying factors for cancer cells. And so we've identified based on these number of factors, um, uh, several targets. So my, our vision over the long time is to see if we can actually bring these combination therapies, evaluate them. And so we're looking at like at least another three to five years of work for this particular molecule alone. Um, sorry about the long answer. <laughs> no, that's okay. Answer. <laughs> but, um, and, and then eventually work with the clinicians um, uh, in Saskatchewan to bring the molecule on a patient trial. Mm-hmm. So we are looking at like about six to eight years for that before we head into the, the clinic aspect. But really the, the most pressing need is the obviously the funds mm-hmm. to do that sort of research. Um, we've assembled a great team, and, and so we've shown time and time again that uh, we have the capability to do great cancer research right here in Saskatchewan. And uh, all uh, our funding supports are actually um, f- at national level grants as well, of course, from Saskatchewan Cancer mm-hmm. Agency and College of Medicine, University of Saskatchewan, uh, Saskatchewan Health Research Foundation because it's a 10-year project. So right. several agencies have supported this Cancer Research Society, Canadian Institute of Health Research. Uh, mm-hmm. They've all supported the research. So our really goal is to bring this to fruition mm-hmm. into the clinic. Um, so that's why we didn't just publish a paper like yeah. in a couple of years, right? Like we really took it to the next level mm-hmm. over the last 10 years of period. Well, it was a big breakthrough, and we can't wait to see where this goes over the next few years. But I really appreciate the conversation this morning. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me.